wish you could hear it. It went. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. Okay. Let's go. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. There's a, there's the claps. There's the applause. Okay. And welcome everybody to my very welcome everybody to my very first podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Hold the applause. Thank you. <sighs> well, here we are, guys. Today is June 10th, 2024. I've been talking about doing a podcast, I think, for the last two years, and I could never get myself to do it, but here we are now. So big thanks to Kael Studios and their staff for allowing us to use the spot. Ellie, thank Woo! you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm home. I actually leave to go back to New York tomorrow. <laughs> And I said, okay, I want to just try and do this podcast thing at least once. The reason I haven't done any is I, I'm kind of a perfectionist. I'm sure there are many of us out there like that. And I wanted to make sure I had this right. I knew how to write a script and do this, this, and all that. But sometimes you just have to go and do it, and you have to fail. Boy, oh, boy. If only you guys knew how much time I actually really have to film this thing and how long I booked this spot. <laughs> Yeah, so I have about 10 minutes to uh, finish this podcast, and I booked this room for two hours. But anyway, first one, it's okay. It's going to have some hiccups. Anyways, I am still trying to figure out what the name of this podcast is going to be. So for now, it's just the unnamed podcast. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. But uh, we have a few questions. So I went on Instagram this morning, and I said, okay, I'm going to do this podcast thing. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. But I have my very special guest here, Ms. Vanna White, <laughs> that will be telling me the questions for the, for the afternoon for this very first podcast. So first question is, oh, OK. The question was, if I could go back to 10 years old, what would I do differently with everything that I know now? I would, let me think about this. 10 years old, I, oh, I had two younger sisters. So my little, I have two younger sisters. The little ist one was born, she was two years old. I would tell myself to just enjoy being a kid a little more. I think I really, really wanted to uphold my role as the oldest daughter and the golden <laughs> child. And so I, I worked really hard growing up. But I think if I would have told myself anything, I would have said to just chill out a little bit um, and have fun and enjoy life. I am enjoying life now. I've realized, you know, there's a perfect timing for everything. Uh, but if I could, I would tell myself, you know, don't be so worried about growing up. Just enjoy being a 10-year-old <laughs> with no bills and nothing to worry about except if I was going to eat and have a good day and like go see my friends. I didn't have to worry about bills and all that. So that's what I would tell myself is to just enjoy life. And I think I'd try to remind myself now and all of us watching, regardless of what age we are, I know that there are things that we tend to worry about, especially for the future. But at whatever age you are right now, that is the only time you're ever going to be this age. So enjoy it where you are right now. <laughs> Next question. Um, Artist come up journey. Okay. I think maybe in, in one one minute or two minutes or less. Okay. Artist come up journey. I don't really know <sighs> how it started. So I started I start my very first gig was at the spot on Kapilani Boulevard right next to Femnu. Um, and it was a very new restaurant called <laughs> Nagomi Tepan and Lounge. <laughs> and I was so stoked because I finally got a gig. I was, I think I was 19. And they told me, you have to make sure you fill this space up every Thursday. If not, you're out. And I remember being so terrified. And I, yeah, so thank God I had a big family. So they came every Thursday for two weeks. <laughs> And then it started getting a little expensive. So then the crowd started dwindling. We didn't have much people there. And on the third week, um, it was empty. Nobody was there. And they called me the, the, the fourth week. And they said they were going to have a DJ instead. And I remember being so heartbroken and so sad. And so even to this day, whenever 
I'm in a space and you know, there's nobody there. I get that PTSD of that first gig. <laughs> but I've learned that, you know, sometimes it happens. Um, and now it's cool because I do bring an audience sometimes. And, and so shout out to all of you that come to my gigs whenever I'm home in Hawaii or even to those of you who come out to the East Coast or wherever I'm at. So that I think that's a big come up for me. Um, but yeah, starting off just playing the guitar and having a person. Actually, no, I, I used to just sing. Um, I always had a boy playing the guitar for me, and I would just sing and look cute like this, and, and you know, and it was great. Um, but then, yeah, eventually I wanted to learn how to play the guitar on my own. Picked up the guitar, and I started playing and singing. Then I got into looping, and now I am a one-woman band, and I get to sing and and like, you know, play the guitar, play Dance Dance Revolution in my heels, and, and it's pretty cool. So I think that's a cool come up. And the last big come up, I think, is being able to say that I get to do music out in New York. I think as a young kid growing up in Hawaii, I never would have thought that I could even vacation that far. So to say that I live there has been a really great experience, and I look forward to the many things that will come out of this new chapter of my life. Okay, next question. <laughs> Is it a funny? She says it's a funny question. Oh, a little personal. Not a little spicy. Well, I passed that age. Okay, so growing up, all the way up until I reached that age, I thought that I was going to get married. I was going to have two kids and a beautiful home by 24. <laughs> 24 was the magical age where I would have my husband and my two kids and my white picket fence. Um, yeah, that didn't happen. And it, I am five years past that age. In fact, I am turning 30 this year. And I'm actually excited for it. But... Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think when I was 23, I started worrying about, whoa, I'm nowhere near any of those things. I had a boyfriend at the time, but other than that, I was like, uh, nowhere near being able to buy a house or kids. Um, and now I think as I'm getting closer to, to 30, those, those thoughts are coming back into mind of, whoa, I'm way past the deadline that I thought I was going to have for my life. Uh, but I've been adjusting it, so... Yeah, no, I, I don't have a home yet. I don't have a person and no kids. But uh, what was the question? <laughs> Am I okay with that? Well, I think that's the thing. Right now, I don't have, I don't have an age. I passed the age, and now I'm just open to whatever experiences happen. I would love to be married. Um, but to someone deserving, so period. You know, if that happens and when that happens, then uh, yeah, we'll both know when. So yeah. The limit does not exist. Okay. Last question. Oh, oh, I like that question. Um, my mantra was a mantra my mom gave me when I was six years old, and it's been with me ever since, uh, which was really, I just tell myself that, you know, I can do anything I set my mind to. I was a very anxiety-ridden little kid. I would go to the health room all the time just so that I could be with my mother because I loved being with her and I hated being far away from her, um, but I would make myself sick. And the health room ladies would always give me a hard time about like, Kiwana, why are you always getting sick? So every time my mom would pick me up, she would make me say that mantra over and over again. And she would say, you can do. And I would say, I can do anything I set my mind to. And I think that's really carried out through my whole life because some of these things I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I really do think that I could do anything I set my mind to because I have really pushed some of the limits of even where I thought I would go. So that is a mantra uh, that I continuously tell myself is, you know, you can do anything you set your mind to. And so if there is something in your life that you feel you can't, uh, just give yourself 
some grace and some patience to kind of work through that here because this thing is really powerful. So the moment you get this thing to believe that you can do it, then you'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Woo-hoo-hoo. 321. Yeah, one, more question. one more question. Okay. Okay, one more question from Vanna White. <laughs> Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay, y'all are getting very, very like, I just gave you some stuff, okay? But anyway, I will be recording. I am working on my next project uh, right now. So I am going to be spending some time out there on the East Coast. We've been working on writing new songs. I am so in love with this project. Uh, I don't know if I can share what the name of the album is going to be yet. Uh, still trying to figure out if it's going to even be an album or an EP. Uh, but uh, it's definitely going to be something I'm very proud of. I Am was me really trying to discover myself and make myself believe, hey, I know this is me. But now I feel like I'm really stepping into who I am um, and being more confident in sharing what I want or what I want to see happen in my life or in the world. And that's what this next project is going to be about. It's going to be about all of these little seeds that I've planted around me and, um, and these things that I love and I believe in. And now I'm starting to see them come into fruition. So I'm getting to smell and enjoy the fruits of the labor. So very excited about that. I have a new song actually coming out at the end of this month for a very, very special little girl. Um, her name is Lily Rose, and I got to meet her and her whole family about two years ago. Last, uh, yeah, two summers ago. They came out to Hawaii to celebrate um, her parents getting married, and I got to sing her mom down the aisle. Uh, but Lily Rose was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma, and she was actually fighting it for a few years. And sadly, she passed away last year in August, and I got a call from her mom. Um, Espy, and she asked if I could come up to LA to attend her celebration of life and, and sing uh, to be a part of this, you know, very heartbreaking chapter of, you know, their life. And so I had the opportunity to go out to LA and, and see Lily. And um, I actually wrote a song a couple of days before I left for LA that really exemplified who she was she had such a beautiful little smile and spirit and uh, just a zest for life that I know a lot of us sometimes can get so caught up in the everyday, but someone like Lily really helps you to remember that every day is not promised and she really lived her life to the fullest and I wanted to find a way to give something back to her mom and dad to bring them comfort but to also perpetuate Lily and, and let her live on and so I'm really excited to, to be releasing this song called Para Siempre. Um, to celebrate Lily's life. And I actually want to also announce that I will be putting this song up on my website for purchase. And anyone who purchases the song will, uh, all proceeds of downloads and purchases of the song on my website are going to go directly to Lily's family who have created the Live for Lily Rose Foundation, which is a nonprofit that is aimed to giving back to other families with neuroblastoma little warriors and yeah my goal is to give back to this family and to see them continue to pour light and love and and Lily's life and sparkle and and everything her beauty into into other families that that need a little bit of that hope so if you feel it in your heart to donate even uh, just aside from purchasing the song uh, that would mean a lot to us I would love to at least raise a thousand dollars for them but we'll see and uh, yeah, that's that's some of the things. I have some upcoming shows. Uh, this Saturday, you can catch me at Urban Vegan Roots in Astoria for the Merienda Afternoon Tea. I'll be showcasing some of my music, playing a little bit. Uh, I'm also at the Dominic Hotel El Tacoy Poolside for brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2 p.m. on specific dates that I'm going to post right here. And also, I am really excited because I'm going to be going on tour with Mike Love in September. So for all of you who are fellow Mike Love fans and that I met last year, I'll get to see you again. So I will be posting those dates also.
but yeah, there's a little bit of everything, and uh, I am actually excited. I hope to do a little more of these things, so this was the first podcast. It's probably only going to go on Instagram because my camera died, but <laughs> it's okay. And uh, yeah, so thank you for joining, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you so much to Charmaine Solomon, a.k.a. Miss Vanna White, <laughs> for getting an SD card for us so that we could do this and not waste the two hours. And um, to all of you for listening. So bye-bye. <laughs>